So this video is in continuation of our previous lecture on chemical mediators of inflammation. Today we will be focusing our attention on plasma protein derived chemical mediators. A quick recall. In the last video we studied that chemical mediators are of two types. Cell derived and plasma protein derived. In the cell derived chemical mediators we have the preformed mediators of which histamine and serotonin are examples and there are newly synthesized or de novo chemical mediators of which we have prostaglandins, leukotrienes, platelet activating factor, reactive oxygen species, nitric oxide, cytokines and neuropeptides. Today we will be focusing on plasma protein derived chemical mediators of which liver is a major source. In this category we have two things to remember. The complement activation system or the complement system and Hagman factor. Factor 12 activation is very important as it connects the kinin system and the coagulation and fibrinolysis system. Coming to the complement system. Complements consist of 20 component proteins. They are found in greater concentration in plasma and are present in inactive form and are labeled from C1 to C9. The ultimate aim of complements is to generate a pore like membrane attack complex that punches holes in the membranes of invading microbes. I would uh, compare them to as minute drilling machines. So their main purpose is to punch holes on the surface of the invading microbes thereby destroying the integrity of the cell. They are numbered from C1 to C9. The critical step involves activation of the third component C3. And there are three pathways. The classical pathway, alternative pathway and lectin pathway. What are the vascular effects? C3A and C5A, they are called as anaphylatoxin. They increase the vascular permeability and cause vasodilatation through release of histamine from mast cells. Leukocyte activation, adhesion and chemotaxis is mediated by C3A and C4A, phagocytosis. And we have finally remembered the membrane attack complex which is made up of multiple copies of the final component C9. So these are the three pathways. Classical pathway, lectin pathway, alternate pathway and through a series of substrates and enzymes they lead to the formation of the membrane attack complex comprised of C5 to C9 proteins which I mentioned earlier are like small drilling holes destroying the integrity of the invading organisms. What are the biological functions of the complements? They fall into two general categories, cell lysis by the membrane attack complex and effect of proteolytic fragments of complement which mediate the following functions. So C3A, C5A, C4A increase the vascular permeability by stimulating release of histamine from masses. Leukocyte adhesion chemotaxin activation is mediated by C5A and C3B acts as opsonin and favors phagocytosis by neutrophils and macrophages. How are they regulated? They are regulated by regulatory proteins such as C1 inhibitor which blocks activation of C1 and inherited deficiency of which causes hereditary angioedema. Decay accelerating factor limits the formation of C3 and C5 convertase. Remember paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria there is deficiency of this DK accelerating factor. Factor H limits convertase formation and deficiency of it can be seen in hemolytic uremic syndrome and macular degeneration. Let us now look at the deficiencies once again. So C1, C2, C4 deficiency associated with SLE and other collagen vascular diseases. C3 and its regulatory protein in severe recurrent pyogenic infection. C5 to C8 membrane attack complex can be deficient in bacteremia associated with gram-negative diplococci and regulatory protein deficiencies we have already 
seen in the previous video. Coming to the coagulation and kinase system. Kinase system. When we think about kinase system, we have to think about bradykinin, right? And we are also now talking about clotting system and the fibrinolytic system. So, bradykinin in the kinase system is a vasoactive nona peptide. Kininogen is a vasoactive peptide derived from plasma and by the action of calicarins results in the release of bradykinin. So, what are the functions of bradykinin? Smooth muscle contraction, increased permeability and dilatation of blood vessels and also causes pain. The action of bradykinin is short-lived because it is quickly inactivated by an enzyme called kininase. Calicarin it has got the following functions. Potent activator of Higuin factor with the chemotactic activity and directly converts C5 to the chemoattractant C5A. So here I would like to say that these systems are not mutually, they are not independent. What is connecting them is factor 12, Higman factor, right? It connects, it activates the kinin and causes the kinin cascade and the clotting cascade, right? And you can see there are links as well here. So the calicrin acts on plasminogen, then causes the activation of plasmin, right? This is linked with the complement cascade here. And here what do we find? Thrombin, the protease active receptors act on it and they cause acute inflammation. So they are all linked. The eight factor is a very common link between the kinin cascade, clotting cascade, fibrinolytic system, complement cascade. They are all linked with one another. That is what we have to remember. Right? And they are linked and they cause various effects of inflammation. So in the clotting system, the protease thrombin provides the main link between the clotting system and inflammation. Thrombin is an enzyme that cleaves circulating soluble fibrinogen to generate insoluble clot. Acts on protease activated receptors. Actions are mobilization of P selectin, reduction of chemokines, prostaglandins, platelet activating factor, and nitric oxide. Expression of endothelial adhesion molecules for leukocyte integrins. Induction of COX2 change in endothelial shape. Fibrinolytic system, factor 12a, so remember, activates the plasmin and plasminogen gets converted to plasmin. It causes breakdown of fibrins leading to formation of fibrin split products. Actions, you can guess, it's an anticoagulant activity, cleaves C3 to C3 fragments and it's chemotactic to leukocytes, acts on kininogen to form calicrin. So this is the summary. We have to remember chemical mediated inflammation is a very vast topic and being vast, it is a, of great pharmacological interest, right? To summarize, chemical mediators, as we discussed in the last class, are either cell derived or plasma protein derived and cell derived mediators are the vasoactive amines, histamine and serotonin and then we have the de novo mediators such as arachidonic acid metabolites. That includes prostaglandins, leukotrienes, lipoxins. Then we have platelet activating factor, cytokines, chemokines, reactive oxygen species, nitric oxide, and lysosomal enzymes of leukocytes and neuropeptides. Then today's class we discussed about plasma protein derived mediators. We have complement components, coagulation, and kinin systems. These are my references. Please like, subscribe, and share this channel.